Methylation has been a buzzword in nutrition, biohacking communities, and all over the internet for quite a while now. It's important for energy levels, hormone balance, and mental health. But most people really have no idea what methylation is and why they should even care. So in this video, I want to explain methylation in a simple and understandable way. I want to explain why it's critical for your health and also talk about methylation issues. We will talk about the MTHFR test, why I believe it sucks, and what to get tested instead to determine your methylation status. Okay, to start off, what exactly is methylation? Methylation is the addition of a methyl group to another molecule. And there's also the term demethylation, which describes taking away a methyl group from a molecule. A methyl group is made up of one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms. So the process of methylation is really a chemical process where these methyl groups are added or taken away from other molecules. And these molecules can really be anything in your body. It can be DNA, it can be proteins, it can be hormones, really anything. And you will understand in a second why all this is important, why we need these methyl groups to be added or taken away from other molecules. What helped me understand the process of methylation better is to think of an on-off switch that really regulates important processes in your body. So like I said before, methyl groups can be added to various things. Proteins, hormones, enzymes, DNA, really anything in your body. Now this is important because many of the things in your body, for example your hormones or neurotransmitters, don't work or don't properly work without the methyl group attached to them. So what the methyl group does is to up or down regulate certain processes in your body. Let me give you an example. So the conversion of serotonin to melatonin, which you probably know as the sleep hormone, depends on methylation, on proper methylation. So if you have methylation issues, this conversion won't work right and you might have problems with sleeping. Methylation is also important for the production of glutathione, which you might know as the main detoxifying agent. For optimal glutathione levels, you need three amino acids, glutamine, glycine, and cysteine, but you also need the methylation process to work efficiently. Otherwise, the glutathione won't be active in your body. And lastly, like I said before, certain neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and adrenaline, also rely on methylation. With this in mind, so thinking of methylation as an on-off switch, you also need to know that this really happens many, many times every second in your body. So it's not something that happens once, but millions of times every day in your body. Now, when you Google methylation and when you research the topic, you will probably also come across methylation issues. The most well-known issue related to methylation is something called MTHFR which stands for methylenetetrahydrofolic reductase. Now this MTHFR enzyme can be faulty in some people. There's a genetic defect that can occur. And testing for that defect is one of the most common genetic tests done nowadays. But it has its problems. Most books on methylation and methylation guides will tell you to get this test. Depending on where you live, it costs between $100 to $500. I remember I got it a couple of years back and it was pretty expensive. I believe it's less expensive in the US and more expensive in Europe. Now, if a mutation is found on this MTHFR gene, then people will assume that your methylation process doesn't work properly. The usual recommendation is then to supplement certain nutrients in fairly high doses. One example of such a supplement would be Thorne's Methyl Guard. It includes methylcobalamin, which is methylated vitamin B12, P5P, which is activated or methylated vitamin B6, and methylfolate, which is vitamin B9. The topic of methylfolate is so complex that it deserves a video on its own. Now, the idea behind this approach is that basically because you were tested for the MTHFR gene and it was found to be faulty, that you need these nutrients to upregulate the process of methylation in your body. I personally don't like this approach and have quite a few problems with it. Why? Well, the most important reason is that it doesn't work for many people. 
It's too simplistic and most people don't improve on the normal methylation protocol, which like I said before, it's just testing your genes and then supplementing supplements such as the methyl guard that I talked about before. The reason this approach doesn't work is because methylation is a lot more complex and we really haven't figured out all of it to understand it fully. It definitely involves more than just one genetic mutation. And if you read these methylation books, most of them admit this, but they will still rely on MTHFR testing and use it as a diagnostic tool. Stress, environmental toxins, nutrition and lifestyle definitely also play a role here. And it's not just your genetic markup. A proof of this is the Italians. About 30% of Italians, especially Italian women, are thought to have a MTHFR genetic mutation, but most of them don't notice it because many Italians, especially in the South, live a very relaxed lifestyle where this genetic mutation doesn't really affect them all that much. So using only this genetic test as a basis for your supplementation, in my opinion, is not a good approach. And in practice, I've seen it backfire on a lot of people. So what do you do instead? If you still care about methylation, you obviously don't want to throw the entire concept out of the window. So what do you test? What do you supplement instead to feel better? Now, I believe your best bet is to go with the Walsh protocol. It's based on the research of William Walsh, who I believe sits in Illinois. He has his Walsh Institute there, and he's done this stuff for the last 40 years. So he really has a lot of research on methylation and methylation issues. Most of his research is focused around methylation and mental problems, but it often also helps people with other problems. Problems with detoxification, problems with energy levels, all that stuff. What he does instead of genetic testing is to determine your methylation status based on whole blood histamine tests. The reason for this is somewhat complex, but to put shortly, your methylation status and your whole blood histamine are inversely correlated. So the higher your histamine in your body, the lower your methylation status. That's because histamine needs to be methylated to be used properly by the body. So if you're methylating properly, your histamine levels should be normal. But if they're too high or too low, then you will be diagnosed by Dr. Walsh with a methylation issue. Like I said before, the correlation is inverse. So the higher your histamine, the lower your methylation status, and the lower your histamine, the higher your methylation status. So unlike the genetic testing, which if it finds a genetic mutation, will diagnose you with undermethylation, Walsh also recognizes overmethylation, where you actually have too many methylation groups in your body, or the methylation process is taking place too quickly. His treatment for this condition is somewhat complex. I can't go over it right now, but I will be recording a video on the Walsh protocol where I talk about it in more detail. In my experience, the success rate of the Walsh protocol is way higher than the success rate of this genetic testing and then taking something like methylguard. That also has to do with the fact that Walsh takes into account not just your methylation status, but also things like copper toxicity, which I have a different video on, and nutrient deficiencies, which in my opinion is something everyone should focus on and work on fixing them properly. Okay, to end this video, I quickly also want to give you my thoughts on methylation and why I personally don't really care about it. Now, this might sound a little crazy because I definitely like to go into detail with this kind of stuff, but... To be honest, methylation is a very complicated, very complex, not fully understand topic. Even if you go with the Walsh protocol, which is better than genetic testing, you will have people that are non-responders. And what I often find, especially on forums focused on methylation, is that people are completely confused about their diagnosis and really don't know what to do. In many cases, fixing your methylation issues will have to do a lot with the B vitamins. That's why the Thorn Methyl Guard includes these three B vitamins I talked about earlier, but there are many others that also influence methylation. If you want to focus on individual B vitamins, optimizing their intake and optimizing your vitamin B levels can become very complex. 
And I believe the cost-benefit ratio there kind of gets out of hand. People that do focus on this kind of stuff usually neglect other things, such as their magnesium deficiency or maybe their copper toxicity. And in my experience, when you fix those things that are fairly simple to fix, often you also get rid of your methylation issues. They kind of disappear on their own. So my recommendation is that you should be familiar with the concept of methylation. And if you're interested in it, go familiarize yourself with the Walsh protocol, but don't obsess over it. Personally, other approaches such as mineral balancing have helped me way more. And I've seen great progress just focusing on fixing my nutrient deficiencies. It's a much simpler task and way easier to track. There are also practitioners that combine mineral balancing with the Walsh protocol, but there are very few and far between, so I really don't have many that I can recommend.